Hi, and welcome to Rebalance MD's educational video presented by our wonderful new joint program navigators. This video is designed to prepare you for surgery and to get you ready for your recovery. Hello, before we begin, please have a pen ready and the following forms printed in front of you. The to-do list. Equipment to rent or purchase. My responsibilities. Feel free to pause the video now to get yourself ready. This session will begin with the to-do list. This form is designed to give you a checklist of all the major things you need to complete before surgery. We will go into detail of all the equipment that you will need. The equipment to rent or purchase form will allow you to circle or tick off what you will need. My responsibilities form is very important. This form will go through and help you plan how to prepare for surgery, what to expect in hospital, how to manage when you are home. We will also go through precautions to maintain after surgery. There are other forms that are included in your education package. These will be explained as we continue in the tutorial. Once you finish this education session and complete the responsibilities form, we need you to fax or email us a copy or drop it off in person at Rebalance MD. This is a requirement as the hospital needs to know that you have completed your education session. Please have the to-do list ready in front of you. The first item on this list is your pre-op exam with your family doctor. During this visit, your family doctor will fill out a form that is required by the hospital. If you do not have a family doctor, you can go to a walk-in clinic and request a pre-op exam. This needs to be completed as soon as possible. If you are booked as a cancellation, this appointment still needs to be completed. Again, please do this as soon as possible. You will need to complete some preoperative tests required by your surgeon. The requisitions for these tests will be provided to you by the new joint program. These tests include a templating x-ray of your hip or knee and chest, an ECG of the heart, and some blood work. The tests need to be completed in an island health location. There is no appointment necessary. You will be served on a first-come, first-served basis. There is also no fasting required. Remember to bring your BC service card and be prepared to pay for two to four hours of parking. A good book or magazine isn't a bad idea either. The Island Health locations in Victoria, where your pre-op tests can be completed, include the following. Saanich Peninsula Hospital, Royal Jubilee Hospital, or Victoria General Hospital. Please refer to your guide for doing pre-op tests for the specific departments and their hours of operation. For the patients who live out of town, please call your local hospital to inquire about their hours of operation. Please confirm with your navigator out-of-town options for your pre-operative tests. Please complete these tests as close to 30 days prior to surgery as possible. It will allow us more time to review the results and address any abnormalities. If you are having symptoms of a bladder infection, such as burning when voiding, foul smelling urine, urinary frequency, and pelvic pain, we advise you to follow up with your family physician and have it treated and cleared up prior to surgery. Please notify your surgeon's office or navigator if a bladder infection is suspected. You will need equipment to help you with your daily activities after surgery. Your navigator will provide you with a list of recommended equipment and options for where to get it from. 
Most of this equipment can be rented or purchased from a local medical supply store or at Rebalance MD. These expenses can often be claimed, so it is a good idea to check with your extended health benefits provider to see what is covered and what documentation is required. Your navigator will provide you with a blank prescription for the equipment that you can submit with your receipts to your extended health benefits provider. Some items may be available from local loan cupboards, although their supply may be limited. All Red Cross loan cupboards require a signed referral from a healthcare professional. For out-of-town Red Cross locations, your navigator will provide you with the signed referral form or will fax it on your behalf. The Victoria Red Cross has a very specific referral process. The new joint program needs to fax the signed referral directly to them and they will call you four to seven days before surgery when your order is ready to be picked up. The Victoria Red Cross does have a limited amount of equipment and receive a large number of referrals. So they ask that if you do have extended health benefits, to use those to purchase equipment so that you can free up their equipment for other people in the community. Other Greater Victoria Loan Cupboards do not require signed referral forms. Contact them around one week before surgery unless otherwise specified. Once you get your equipment, set it up and practice. This way you will familiarize yourself with the equipment and be able to return or exchange any items that do not fit or work. You do not need to bring any equipment to the hospital. We have provided you with a shopping list of items you should purchase or borrow before surgery. The items on this list, as well as any piece of equipment necessary, are all available at One Bracing, located at Rebalance MD, shortly past reception. Here at One Bracing, we look forward to conveniently providing you with any equipment you need for your upcoming surgery. We have competitive pricing, and our staff is knowledgeable about your surgeon's recommendations. As we go through the education session, we will explain each shopping list item in more detail. Please remember to bring your printed prescriptions when purchasing all the items. The pre-admission clinic visit will include a medication review by a hospital pharmacist as well as a possible anesthetic consult if your surgeon has required you to have one. Sometimes the medication review will be done over the telephone. If you are booked to see an anesthesiologist, this consult will either take place at Rebalance MD or at the hospital. It is important to have all your pre-op tests done before this appointment so the anesthesiologist can make a proper assessment of your health status. This will happen any time from when your surgery was booked up to the day before surgery. For further anesthetic information, please visit our website and look at our anesthetic video online. As a patient waiting for joint replacement, your role is the most important one. Through each stage, there are specific responsibilities you will be required to plan for and complete to ensure the success of your recovery. Please have my responsibilities ready in front of you. As we go through the remainder of the education video, you will need to fill in the blanks. Your anticipated length of stay in hospital can be as little as one to two nights. This is determined by your surgeon and whether or not you reach the discharge criteria, including pain control, mobility, and medical stability. We feel as though it is to your advantage to be discharged as soon as possible as patients tend to be most comfortable at home or in a nurturing environment. Shortly after you receive your surgical date, you will receive your surgical package by mail or by email. In this package, you will receive your general guidelines for fasting. This will explain when you are to stop eating and drinking. You will also receive direction for your pre-operative showers, which will be explained in more detail later in this video. Directions on when to stop taking certain medications will also be included. Please read this package thoroughly once you receive it. Within one week before your surgery date, you will receive the time to arrive at the hospital. 
This information will come by email or a phone call from the surgical booker at Rebalance MD. It is recommended that you make arrangements before surgery for key rides that you will require after surgery. These include your ride home from the hospital and a ride to your surgeon's follow-up appointment as well as to your physiotherapy appointment. Whoever is picking you up from the hospital will need to have your two-wheeled walker in the trunk of the car. If you are having hip surgery, you will also need your cushion to sit on for the ride home. If you have stairs that you need to do to get into your home, please have a cane close to the front door. Another thing to consider is that you will need to stop at a pharmacy on the way home from the hospital. You will also need to arrange a ride to your follow-up appointment with your surgeon, usually around two to four weeks after surgery, as well as to your physiotherapy appointment. Please watch the video on how to get in and out of a car as a passenger and practice this before surgery. You will be restricted from driving for four to six weeks after surgery. Your surgeon will discuss when you should return to driving at your follow-up appointments. The major factor for driving is brake response time. You need to be able to slam on the brakes with your right leg should you need to stop suddenly. Therefore, if you are having your right leg operated on, it will be around six weeks until you can drive. You also need to be off any prescription narcotic pain medication. If you are having your left leg operated on, it also depends on whether you have a standard or automatic transmission. If you are having hip surgery, you need to be able to get in and out of the car and sit in the driver's seat obeying all your hip precautions. This also includes no twisting while shoulder checking or putting on your seat belt. As you can see, there are many factors to consider before driving, so please discuss this further with your surgeon at your follow-up appointment. On the responsibilities form, please fill in the first blank space with the person who will be picking you up from the hospital. Please review your knee or hip booklet prior to your surgery. Make sure that you prepare your home by removing any area rugs that pose a tripping hazard. You may also want to move certain pieces of furniture so that a nice, clear, wide path is available for you to mobilize through with your two-wheeled walker. We also encourage our patients to set up and practice using all the required equipment prior to going in for your surgery. After surgery, it will be very beneficial for you to have some help. You will be able to mobilize within your home when you are discharged, but it is recommended that you limit standing to less than five minutes per hour, especially in the first week or two following surgery. Therefore, you will need help with many chores such as cooking, cleaning, laundry, grocery shopping, and driving. Please be aware that if you do not have a plan for help after surgery, the hospital will not organize this for you. All planning must be done in advance. If you do not have this organized, the hospital will still discharge you once you meet discharge criteria. Again, you can be discharged in as little as 24 to 48 hours after surgery, so make sure that you have a plan in place for post-op help. If you have any questions regarding help after surgery, please feel free to contact your navigator. We can provide you with our resource booklet that lists local respite facilities, home nursing care, transportation options, medical equipment stores, grocery stores offering home delivery, and pet care. On the responsibilities form, please write down who your plan for help after surgery is, such as your spouse, family member, friends, home care, or respite facility. We want to reduce the risk of infection to your new joint as much as possible, so ensuring that you're infection-free prior to the joint replacement is very important. Please notify Rebalance if you have any symptoms of an infection or fever, a cold or flu, an open wound, or a weeping rash. 
Good oral hygiene is also important to reduce your infection risk. We advise that any dental work, including cleaning, is done three months before surgery. If you are booked for surgery and a dental emergency occurs, please contact your surgeon's office immediately. The surgeon will decide whether or not to proceed or postpone your surgery. Drinking alcohol up until your surgery date increases the chance of experiencing delirium. Delirium is a temporary acute state of confusion. It is therefore important to begin tapering alcohol consumption at least one week prior to your surgical date. Smoking can delay healing of both the incision as well as the joint itself. Nicotine constricts blood vessels causing the joint and the incision to get less oxygen and less healing nutrients. If you smoke, this is a good time to quit. We will work with you with a smoking cessation program called Quit Now and we are happy to send in a referral to the Quit Now program for you. Please contact your navigator or a surgeon's office to help organize this. What to pack. When thinking about what you'll need to bring for your stay in hospital, the following items will be useful. Comfortable loose clothes, making sure your pants are loose in the legs as your joint will be swollen after surgery, making tighter pants hard to put on. Good walking shoes that have a heel or a strap and that are closed toed. Personal items that you may want to bring in, such as a toothbrush or a hairbrush. Please label any cases for dentures, eyeglasses, or hearing aids. Please do not bring any valuables such as cash or jewelry. If you do want to bring in valuables such as a laptop or iPad, we suggest having someone bring it to you when you are recovering on the unit. Ensure you do not wear any deodorants, lotions, perfumes, or makeup. You will need to do some special showers the night before and the morning of your surgery to quasi-disinfect your skin. You will receive written instructions on how to do these showers in your surgical package. You can purchase the chlorhexidine scrubs here at Rebalance MD and at most pharmacies. A key point about these showers is that you will need to do some laundry planning as everything that touches your skin after the shower needs to be clean. It is a good idea anyways to do an extra few loads of laundry before surgery so you have less to worry about after. The night before your surgery, have a regular shower. Wash your hair with your shampoo and conditioner, your body with soap. Break open scrub number one and lather it up. Then scrub from the chin down. You do not need to put it on your face or in your hair. Every inch of your body. So if there are some inches, like your feet, or in between your shoulder blades, that you just can't reach, you can get creative with a long-handled shoehorn. Attach the scrub with dental floss or an elastic band, and voila, you have a long-handled scrubber. Please clean your private areas last. Now you need to make sure you get the bathroom nice and hot and steamy, as you need to let the suds sit on your skin for two minutes. Thoroughly rinse off, then dry yourself with a freshly clean towel, get into freshly clean pajamas, and sleep in freshly clean sheets. Please do not put on any lotions, powders, makeup, deodorant, aftershave, hairspray after this shower. You need to remove any nail polish from the fingers and the toes, so this is not a good time for a pedicure. Also, remove any jewelry. The next morning, do the exact same thing with scrub number two. Dry yourself off with a second clean towel and get yourself into the clean clothes that you'll be wearing to the hospital. Please fill in the two blanks on your responsibilities form. Total hip arthroplasty also called total hip replacement, begins with an incision to allow access to the bones of the hip joint. The next step is to remove damaged cartilage and bone from the acetabulum, the cup-shaped hollow in the pelvic bone. This damage results from the bones rubbing directly against each other when protective cartilage wears away. A tool called a reamer 
is used to prepare the acetabulum to receive the socket portion of the hip replacement. This metal and plastic combination is called the acetabular component and is fitted into the newly reamed bone surface. The outer metal part of this component, sometimes called a cup, fits directly into the socket. The inner plastic portion has a hollow to hold the replacement for the ball-shaped bone at the top of the thigh bone, or femur. The outer metal part is rough to help bone grow into its surface over time to lock the artificial socket in place. The next step is removing the ball-shaped head of the femur, or thigh bone, and preparing the femur for placement of the stem portion of the component. A metal ball is attached to the end of the stem and fits into the artificial socket in the hip bone. Together, these components replace the natural ball and socket joint. During and after surgery, the surgeon verifies the correct fit and range of motion of the hip replacement components. By mimicking the anatomy and functioning of the natural hip joint, hip replacement can reduce pain and permit a return to many activities. Your joint replacement is now complete. After your surgery, you will be taken to the recovery room while your anesthetic wears off. From here, you will be taken to the surgical unit for the remainder of your stay. During your hospital stay, you will be lying in bed most of the time. A significant decrease in mobility can cause congestion to build and sit at the bottom of your lungs. If this congestion cannot be cleared, it can cause lung complications, such as pneumonia. On your responsibilities form, please print lung complications in the blank space provided. To help clear your lungs, it is recommended that you take 10 deep breaths every hour that you are awake. Deep breathing causes air to get to the bottom of the lungs, moving and clearing the congestion. Periodic coughing after taking a deep breath is also advisable as coughing can also clear the lungs. It is important to pump your ankles up and down while in hospital at least 10 times per hour. This action reduces the risk of developing a blood clot in your calf. On your responsibility form, please print blood clots in the fill in the blank spot. Every patient will be prescribed a blood thinner. After surgery, you'll be mobilizing less, causing a decrease in circulation, and this will increase your risk for getting a blood clot. Therefore, your blood thinner is very important. Please take this medication for as long as your surgeon prescribes. Your surgeon may prescribe one of the following three medications. The first is Delta Parin. This is a self-injection that the nurse will teach you how to give yourself. You should be advised that this medication can be quite expensive when you fill the prescription at the pharmacy. It can be hundreds of dollars depending on how long you need to be on it. The second is aspirin. Some surgeons also prescribe aspirin as a blood thinner. It is important to continue this medication for as long as the surgeon has prescribed it. Remember, if this is prescribed for you, it is to reduce the risk of blood clots and not to help manage pain. The third is Xarelto or Rivaroxaban. This medication is another medication that might be prescribed. It is a pill and also may be expensive. The blood thinner that you will be on will be decided by your surgeon after surgery. This is based upon many issues such as your medical history, weight, and surgeon preference. Remember, your blood thinner is very important for a safe and successful recovery. If you are prescribed Dolteparin, a self-injection technique guide will be provided to you by the hospital. This includes website access to a video demonstration. Venapro is a compression device that can reduce blood clots and minimize lower leg swelling. Apply it to your calf as being demonstrated. Press and hold the button on the top of the device. It will start the compression. This device is rechargeable and lasts about four hours. To charge it, place the cord into the device's port and plug into an electrical outlet. 
The best time to wear Venapro is when you are lying or sitting for long periods. Ideally, you want to continue using Venapro for four to six weeks after surgery or while you are on your blood thinner. If you have a medical condition that increases your risk for blood clots, this could be very valuable. Also, this device can come in handy during airplane flights to help increase circulation. This is a unique device sold only at One Bracing, located at Rebalance MD. Please note that this device is a recommendation, but it is not mandatory. This device has a significant cost. Please contact One Bracing to inquire about the price. If you have extended health benefits, please check with your plan to see if it is covered. It will be termed as pneumatic limb compression device. This item is added to your prescriptions in your education package. You will receive written prescriptions for your pain medication and your blood thinner medication when you leave the hospital. You will need to fill these prescriptions on your way home, so it is a good idea to put a mental picture in your mind as to your drive home from the hospital. You will need to stop at a pharmacy, drop off the prescription, then either wait for it to get filled or have someone drive you home and they go back and pick it up. That is why you need the two-wheeled walker in the trunk of the car, so you can get out and move around a bit if you need to wait. If you are having surgery at the Royal Jubilee Hospital, there is an outpatient pharmacy that you can use. However, they are only open Monday to Friday. So if you have surgery on Thursday and are due to go home on Saturday after your two-night stay, you will need to find a community pharmacy to fill your prescriptions. Your physiotherapy exercises are very important after surgery. In the hospital, you will meet with a physiotherapist the day after surgery, if not sooner. They will give you your exercise guide with instructions on how many of the exercises to do and how often. Please follow those exercises after discharge from the hospital until meeting with the outpatient physiotherapist. Physiotherapy is free at Rebalance MD, Saanich Peninsula Hospital, or any Island Health Hospital. You are welcome to go to a private physiotherapist, however, you will need to cover the cost. You will see a physiotherapist two to three weeks after surgery. At this time, you will be assessed and given further direction. It is suggested that you continue with your two-wheeled walker or crutches until this appointment. After this visit, your next appointment will be at the six-week mark, and then 12 weeks. If you are going to Saanich Peninsula Hospital, they will call you with an appointment once you are discharged from hospital. If you do not hear from them shortly after you are discharged, please call them. If you are coming to Rebalance MD, please call us to make an appointment. If you are going elsewhere, please call that location to arrange an appointment. Pain management after joint replacement is crucial to your recovery. It is important for you to stay ahead of the pain. A common way to reference your pain after surgery is by using a scale from 0 to 10, where 0 means you have no pain and 10 means the worst pain imaginable. The best time to take your pain medication is when your pain level is around a 3 or 4, uncomfortable but bearable. This way, you will require a smaller dose of pain medication to bring your pain level back to a comfortable range, such as a 1 or 2. If you wait until your pain level reaches 7, 8 or 9, you will need a higher dose of pain medication. This can lead to nausea, drowsiness and dizziness and should be avoided. There are a variety of pain medications that your surgeon may order for you. Please refer to the pain control after surgery portion of your knee or hip surgery booklet provided. It is important in the transition from hospital to home to maintain consistent dosing. If your surgeon gave you prescriptions for two painkillers, it is important to only use one medication at a time. Please refer to the pain control at home portion of your hip or knee surgery booklet. Using ice is very important in your recovery, especially in the first few weeks. 
Icing will help with swelling and pain management. There are two icing methods that we recommend. The first are ice packs. Ideally, have at least two to four ice packs in your freezer. Place one to two ice packs on your hip, always making sure to have a barrier between the ice pack and your bare skin. You can use a pillowcase or a thin towel. We suggest keeping the ice pack on for 15 to 20 minutes. It is advised that you do not keep the ice pack on for an extensive period of time to avoid frostbite. Your tissues need to warm up to allow for blood circulation to aid in healing. Repeat this every four to six hours. It is a good idea to ice after your exercises or if you have been up for a long period of time. Continue to use ice regularly until your swelling and pain is better managed and you continue to recover. This can be anywhere from two to six weeks or longer if you feel ice is still helpful. A cryotherapy machine can be a very convenient method of icing. A cryotherapy machine is made up of a mini cooler that you fill with ice and water. The machine pushes this cold fluid through a tube and into a sleeve, which you secure around your joint with a Velcro belt. You can control the temperature using a dial ranging from cold to very cold. The machine will stay cold for up to six hours. A tip to minimizing the amount of crushed ice you will need is to freeze yogurt or margarine containers and place the chunk of ice in the cryotherapy unit with water. A frozen block takes longer to thaw than crushed ice. This is how to apply the cryotherapy sleeve. Remember to maintain hip precautions, which will be discussed later. Also, please read the manufacturer's instructions before using. Cryotherapy machines are an investment and can cost two to four hundred dollars depending on make and model. They are sold at most medical equipment stores as well as at one bracing here at Rebalance MD. If you have extended health benefits, please check with the company to see if they cover the cost of this item. We have added this item to your prescriptions provided in your education package. For optimal effects to reduce swelling, use ice while lying down with your surgical leg elevated on pillows. Most patients will have some degree of swelling postoperatively, and it can vary greatly from patient to patient. For hips, the swelling can be from the hip all the way down the operative leg. It will be increased on days when you're up on your feet more. Applying ice to your hip and lying down completely flat will help bring the swelling down. You may also notice bruising down your leg to the ankle and foot. A sudden increase in the amount of pain or swelling in your leg, especially associated with tenderness in your calf or thigh, should prompt an urgent phone call to the surgeon's office or your navigator. You will be responsible for your own dressing change after surgery. Different surgeons have different dressing directions and preferences. Please follow your dressing change guidelines provided in your package. The guidelines will specify instructions as to when to change your dressing or whether to leave the dressing completely alone. If you need to change your dressing, it is very straightforward, like changing the band-aid on a paper cut. Remember to wash your hands before peeling off the old dressing slowly. Without touching the incision, apply a new dressing over the incision. The wound does not need to be cleaned with anything or disturbed in any other way. Press down the edges firmly of the new dressing to achieve a good seal so that it will be waterproof if it is a waterproof dressing. There are a variety of dressings you can choose to purchase. The first, least costly, is called Mipor. It's a cotton dressing that comes in rolls that you can cut to size or in pre-cut strips. You can purchase Mipor from most pharmacies or home health stores. Mipor is not waterproof, therefore before each shower you will be required to waterproof your dressing with saran wrap and waterproof tape. 
there are two specialty dressings preferred by our surgeons. The first one is called Mepilex. It is waterproof and sold at One Bracing here at Rebalance MD or at the diabetic store on Douglas Street. The second waterproof option is Aquacel AG. The absorbent pad is impregnated with silver, which is a natural antimicrobial. The cost for one specialty dressing can be between $20 and $50. There is drainage that can occur to your dressing for both hips and knees. If drainage completely fills your dressing and it is overflowing, or if you have any other concerns, please contact your surgeon's office or your navigator. Infection after total joint replacement can be a very serious complication. Fortunately, our local rates of infection are similar to most big centers at approximately 1-2% to of joint replacement surgeries. Going into surgery, there are some things that can be done to help reduce the risk of infection. For a person with diabetes, optimal blood sugar control is paramount prior to surgery. Dental work especially any dental infections, need to be dealt with prior to surgery. Open sores or wounds, especially near the surgical site, cannot be present at the time of surgery and need to be addressed if present. If there's a possibility of an active bacterial infection, such as pneumonia or urinary tract infection, for example, this also needs to be treated prior to surgery. After surgery, Signs of infection include the following. Redness, swelling, fever and chills, a significant increase in pain, or significant drainage from the incision. However, with a true infection, it is usually when you're experiencing more than one of these symptoms. If you are concerned, please contact your navigator or surgeon's office. We, your surgeons, want to be the one to assess your surgical site. Don't go to just a walk-in clinic or your GP's office. If you suspect a surgical infection and it is an evening or a weekend, there is an on-call orthopedic surgeon available at both the Royal Jubilee Hospital or the Victoria General Hospital. Again, if you have any concerns, if possible, please contact Rebalance MD first. Constipation is a side effect of surgery that can be difficult to manage. There are many factors that will prevent you from being regular. One of the biggest culprit for constipation is pain medication. Plan on keeping high fiber foods in stock and try to keep hydrated. If you are normally prone to constipation, there are a variety of different stool softeners and laxatives. You can discuss your options with your pharmacist. Bottoms up. After surgery, you will need to see your surgeon for your follow-up appointment. This can be anywhere from two to four weeks after surgery. When you have been discharged from the hospital, please call to book this appointment if you have not done so already. Three months after your joint replacement, you are able to continue dental work as necessary. Remember, good oral hygiene is important. In the first three months after surgery, you are at an increased risk for a hip dislocation. Bone and ligament healing and muscle strengthening can be a slow process. Maintaining the following hip precautions can significantly reduce the risk of a dislocation. These precautions include no bending past 90 degrees, no twisting, and no crossing the midline. You can now write these down on your responsibilities form before we go into more detail. The hip precaution of no bending at the waist past 90 degrees is the most difficult hip precaution as many of your daily activities such as dressing and sitting require bending at the waist past 90 degrees. You will need to use a long handled reacher to pick items off the floor. You don't realize how many things you drop until you aren't allowed to pick them up. 
Same for low drawers and cupboards. You will need to move commonly used items in your kitchen, bathroom, and bedroom to counter height. In a pinch, you can do the golfer's reach as long as you have a sturdy piece of furniture to hold on to and trust your other leg. 90 degrees is the angle between the trunk of your body and your thigh. Going a long way back to your geometry days, 90 degrees is a right angle, so you can imagine your arms being the hypotenuse. A quick cheat when you're sitting is that your shoulders and knees should not come any closer than locked elbow distance apart. Before you sit down, you need to ensure that the top of the seat comes at least two inches above the back of your knee. That way, when you sit down, your hips will be higher than your knees and your knees will point down slightly. Your homework is to measure yourself to every surface that you sit on, kitchen chair, computer chair, toilet, bed, TV watching chair, sofa. Use a high density foam cushion or furniture risers to gain height on your chairs and on your bed and a raised toilet seat for your toilet. It is also recommended that you use a chair with arms. When most people sit down, they slightly bend forwards and stick out their bottom, but that breaks the 90 degree hip precaution. Same with when you stand up, you lean forward slightly. You will actually need to lean back slightly when sitting down and standing up. And this is much easier if you use a chair with arms. Since many chairs in your home are armless, don't forget about your patio furniture. Many of those have arms. Bring it in, put a cushion on it, cover it with a sheet to make it look pretty, and voila, you have a chair with arms. Lazy Boy recliners are great too. However, you'll likely need to slouch a bit when you're sitting down as putting the foam cushion on the seat isn't that comfortable. Also, make sure that the mechanism to elevate your legs does not require you to bend or twist to pull the lever. Once you are sitting, you are stuck. You cannot bend forwards to tie up your shoes or lift your leg up to put on your socks. You will need to use a long-handled reacher, long-handled shoehorn, and sock aid to get dressed. Please watch these videos on our website, then practice before surgery. It is harder than it looks and it takes practice and coordination. It will take you much longer to get dressed than you could ever imagine. However, you are not supposed to have anything else to do in the first couple weeks after surgery, so you'll have time. You will need to be sitting down when you get dressed. This can either be on your bed or on a separate chair. Ensure that both heights are correct before sitting down. As you are not allowed to twist, your equipment needs to be within easy reach, either on a side table or right beside you. You will need to lift your foot a little when getting dressed, so don't forget the quick cheat that your shoulder and knees need to be locked elbow distance apart. Therefore, if you need to lift your leg up a bit, counterbalance by leaning your upper body back. Another trick if you go out of your home and have to sit on a lower chair or toilet, lean backwards or slouch. In summary, for the 90 degree hip precaution, your homework is to move commonly used items to higher locations, measure yourself to everything that you'll be sitting on and raise those heights, and practice dressing using your long-handled shoehorn, long-handled reacher, and sock aid. You will need to follow the no twisting rule for up to three months after your hip replacement. To avoid twisting, make sure that your nose follows the toes whenever you need to turn your body. We do not want the foot of your affected leg to turn inward, also described as pigeon-toed. Do not twist your shoulders or turn at the waist towards your affected leg while keeping your foot still. When turning, take small steps in the direction you want to turn and make sure you lift your foot on the affected leg and turn your whole body. Do not reach for objects by turning your shoulders without also turning your pelvis. The most common mistake patients make is twisting their body while keeping one leg still. We encourage you to practice the nose follows your toes motion prior to surgery. Setting up your home to aid in the no-twisting motion is also beneficial. For example, moving your bedside table so that it is positioned in front of you, positioning any lamps, remote controls, books, 
toilet paper, etc. on a table ahead of you. When sitting in a car, being mindful of the no twisting motion when putting on your seatbelt or when shoulder checking. Discuss with your surgeon or physiotherapist when it would be safe for you to return to driving. Do not cross your legs at the knees or ankles. If you are in the habit of doing this now, please practice using a pillow between your legs. Also, use pillows between your legs when lying on your side when in bed. Lifetime precautions after knee or hip replacement surgery. There are controversies as to acceptable activities after hip or knee replacement. Low impact activities that avoid extreme range of motions are acceptable. It's always best to avoid high impact activities such as running or jumping in order to preserve the longevity of the prosthesis. Any other specifics should be discussed with your own surgeon. We recommend that you stay close to town for the first six weeks after surgery. Complications are most likely to happen in this time frame, and we want you to be able to be assessed by your surgeon if necessary. After that, it depends on your travel health insurance. Many travel insurance policies don't cover conditions that have changed in the last 90 days or three months, and surgery is definitely a change. If you are having hip surgery, you will also need to lug your equipment, such as your raised toilet seat, tub transfer bench, cushion, etc., so that you can continue to obey your hip precautions. Due to the increased risk of blood clots after surgery, it is recommended that you delay airplane travel for three months after surgery. You will set off the airport metal detectors. You will not be given a card, as cards can be forged. You'll need to let security know before you go through, and they may spend some extra time with you afterwards or send you through the x-ray scanner if that is available. Please allow extra time for check-in at the airport. You have now completed your joint education session. Please go over your responsibilities form, filling in all the blanks. Please sign it once it is complete. Make a copy for yourself if you feel it would be useful. Return a copy of this to your navigator, either by dropping it off at Rebalance MD or by mail, fax, or email. We wish you all the best in your replacement journey. Remember, your navigator and the Rebalance MD team are available to help in any way we can.